So with just about every movie that comes out, there's usually some kind of survey that the company behind the movie will give out. Uh, they usually contract companies to do these. They're very randomized. Uh, I've never taken one, but there's a lot of places that do hand these out. And they're, you know, they talk about your experience and there's a lot of questions. And there was one question that got an answer that I found very interesting that I want to talk about, among some other things that came out last night. Every every day, there's something coming out Star Wars related. And this is the big one for me. I got a couple other things, but this is the big one I want to talk about. I'm actually going to do another video on the box office topic that's not so related to Star Wars. But I want to talk about what I found in this article first. So this is from Variety. Headline, why Star Wars and Avengers weren't enough to set a box office record in 2019. It's a very interesting article. But this is what I found really kind of interesting to think about right here. So listen to this. So this is a little bit of context here. This is coming off of a paragraph that was talking about how streaming is kind of dipping into cinema. And the argument of this article here is that they don't think streaming hurts movies like going to the movies as people see you know they like to go out of the house I totally agree with one of the reasons I like to go to the movie theaters when I do go you know get out of the house go do something but that's not what I really want to talk about in this video what I want to talk about is a question that got answered in a Fandango survey which they touch on in here in a recent survey by Fandango I'm not sure if I'm saying that right which found that 78% of moviegoers said they were excited to see The Rise of Skywalker because they'd been watching The Mandalorian. The Star Wars TV spinoff series began streaming on Disney Plus just weeks before the Skywalker saga ended its run on movie screens. Now that's pretty interesting and telling. 78% of the people that went to see Rise of Skywalker were watching... The Mandalorian. Now, what do we know about The Mandalorian? Well, it's pretty universally loved by Star Wars fans. Even the shills that are just going to town for Rise of Skywalker love The Mandalorian. Even the people that, like myself, hated Last Jedi and think Rise of Skywalker is a mess love The Mandalorian. Some people are critical on it, but the majority of people like the show a lot. So it kind of just lays some credit to a lot of the theories that people had that this show being put out at the time it was, was intentional. And it's helping Rise of Skywalker. And I think this asks a pretty good question. How would Rise of Skywalker performed without the help of the Mandalorian? You got to remember, like I remember a little bit before that Mandalorian even came out, there was really no hype for Rise of Skywalker there was a trailer that came out like literally three months before the movie came out. And a lot of us were asking, where's the trailer? This movie comes out in months. What are they doing? I think I even made a video on that. I'm pretty sure other people did as well. You know, there was no hype for it. It's like nobody cared. And then The Mandalorian came out. And, you know, interest in Star Wars boomed again. So I wonder, you know, how much, how much did The Mandalorian help? Rise of Skywalker ticket sales. There's no way to really answer this question because the fact is the show came out. But I wonder, you know, how would this movie have performed without The Mandalorian? The Mandalorian is a massive success. Everybody likes that show. There's a few people that don't. But for the most part, uh, we all love it. I love the show. It actually makes me like Star Wars again. And there was other things that helped. Rise uh, or uh, Jedi Fallen Order definitely was a great game. I also played Vader Immortal, which is a VR-only game on Oculus, and I really, really love that game. If you have access to any kind of an Oculus uh, Oculus Rift VR headset, I highly recommend playing that game. It's a lot of fun. Unlike Rise of Skywalker, which I did not have fun in. In fact, I almost fell asleep when I watched the movie. I actually went and got a Mountain Dew to try to get some extra caffeine in me so I could stay awake for the show because I, I was just bored in there. It was literally, I, I did a review on this, go get the MacGuffin, go plot A to B, blah, blah, blah. I didn't care for the movie. Now, Mandalorian, I did like. Now, I was, I probably would have like waited to see this movie if I didn't have a YouTube channel, but I just wonder, you know, how much hype transferred from the Mandalorian 
to this movie. We'll never know, but it's nice to know that we do have some evidence in that paragraph and from that survey that says 78% of the people that have watched this movie did so because The Mandalorian got them hyped for it. And I'm really starting to believe, by the way, that those Rotten Tomato scores are fake. So check this out. We've got a nice screenshot here of what's going on. So look at this screenshot. These are reviews from Rise of Skywalker. Robert. Uh, five stars. Excellent ending to the saga. A great end to the saga. Great ending to a great story. Great ending to a great franchise. Great finish to the series. Great ending to the Skywalker saga. Great ending to the series. Great ending to the series. It's just the same stuff. This is all coming from that Rotten Tomatoes website for verified users, nonetheless. And this is all we get. It's literally the same. It's literally the same scores. Same five stars. Same same writing for the reviews. There's really there really is something fishy going on here. Once again, you know, there's no 100% way to say that this is what's going on with the movie. But you can't say that this isn't strange. That there's not something strange going on with the Rotten Tomatoes score when it comes to Rise of Skywalker. Because last time I looked at this, we were at like 60,000 something verified users. Now it's at 71, pushing close to 72. And it's still sitting at 86%. It's like they locked the score. There's really something strange going on there. And I want to point out that the critic tomato meter has changed like three times in the past three days. It went up to 56. It's now down to 54. And you only have 436. But yet this audience score doesn't change. I guess I, I wonder, like, is there like strong connections to Rotten Tomato and Disney? If you remember, they did some shady stuff with Captain Marvel. You remember that? And that wasn't that long ago. I guess they've done some stuff with Star Wars Resistance as well. And now, you know, it's not really a surprise that something's going on with Rise of Skywalker. I really do think something fishy is going on there. But like I said, I can't prove it. There's no way to really see if this is true without some kind of insider from Rotten Tomatoes coming out and saying so. So it's just, it's really interesting to watch and talk about nonetheless. By the way... Didn't I just talk about this yesterday? I said Disney made a mistake even responding to the Rose Tico outrage. Well, here's a quick update for you. Uh, we've got outlets putting out articles like this. Star Wars writer makes excuses for why Rose Tico was mostly cut from Rise of Skywalker. The reduction of Kelly Marie Tran's part wasn't deliberate, but it does show Disney didn't care enough to fix it. So... Like I said, you can't please these people. They're honestly just going to, whatever you say, they're going to double down and push harder on it. And don't be surprised if they do push for that uh, John Cho sequel, the Disney series that they want made so bad. I wouldn't be surprised if Disney bends the knee and announces a Rose Tico series. Watch. Because what's, what's Kelly Marie Tran doing? Is she doing anything else? I don't know anything about the actress or what she does. But if they said, hey, we want to give you a, a Disney Plus check to come do a show, you think she's going to turn it down? I don't think so. She's probably the only one I haven't heard say anything because most of the other uh, stars of the movies all said, hell no. Honestly, I believe that's BS as well. You give anybody enough money, they'll come back. There's always there's always a price. Also, real quick, I just want to talk about this because this isn't worth the whole video, but it's worth just at least mentioning. Comicbook.com, which is very hit or miss, they put a lot of garbage out. Uh, has decided to put this out. The Mandalorian Season 2, possible Darth Maul return teased. So I guess Ray Park was having some fun uh, with, him, with his Twitter account, putting his uh, Darth Maul face out there. Darth Maul is not coming back, at least in The Mandalorian. Could they give Darth Maul a Disney Plus series doing something? Sure they could. They set that up in Solo. But Darth Maul doesn't make it past A New Hope. If you watch the series Rebel, Star Wars Rebels, uh, Darth Maul ends up finding Obi-Wan Kenobi on Tatooine, and they have a showdown, samurai style almost, like a one, one hitter quitter, and Obi-Wan takes his ass out, and he's buried on Tatooine. Now, a lot of people bring up the argument, they brought the Emperor back. Sure, that's a fair point. That is a fair point. However, I don't see them bringing him back not for Mandalorian. 
If anything, they're going to bring Boba Fett back. And they did put out an article saying expect to see original characters in Mandalorian next season. And I, and I think that that's true. You could see some people, but it won't be Darth Maul. Darth Maul is done. I just think that that's a fact. I don't think they're bringing him back. If they do, they'll give him, they might give him a Disney Plus series, but it's not going to interfere with the Rebels storyline. Dave Filoni is running a lot of the TV stuff, and I just don't see him contradicting his own canon. He actually seems to care about it. So as far as as I would expect, from what I know with Dave, I don't see him contradicting what he did already in Rebels. So that's pretty much all I've got to say about it. That's it for the video. What do you guys think about the whole Mandalorian helping Rise of Skywalker thing? I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, I do honestly believe that a lot of the success of that movie is owed to that TV show. I really do. And some some to the video game Fallen Order as well. I think both of them definitely helped hype up the franchise for the movie. And I really wonder, how would that movie have done without the Mandalorian? Would, do you think it would have been a success as much as it has been without that TV show. I'd like to hear what you guys have to think. So leave me your comments. What do you think about all this? What do you think about the Tico stuff too? Give me your give me your responses. Also throw a like up. Remember comments and likes really help videos in the algorithm. It's called interaction points. So please consider interacting with the video. Also consider sharing the video. That's also very helpful. Make sure you're still subscribed to well. That's as well. That's still something going on. YouTube is some unsubscribing people. So double check on that. If you're new, consider subscribing to help the channel. Also hit that notification bell. And as always, I will see you guys on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. Also, take a moment, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. Uh, there's something going on right now, and they've been unsubscribing people. So just take a second and double check on that and subscribe if you're new.